to start with just a quick round of introductions for who we have in the room here at uh, Puget Sound Regional Council. So my name is uh, Sarah Gutchow. I'm a senior planner at PSRC. I'm Gil Cerise, program manager in transportation planning at PSRC. And I'm Nick Johnson, assistant planner at PSRC. Okay, thanks, Nick and Gil. Um, so I have a few couple announcements I just wanted to make before we get started. One is uh, we have about an hour for this. I don't know if it'll take the full hour, but we have a good amount of time at the end for Q&A. So if you have any questions, including any technical questions, you can provide them through the Q&A box. And we some of them will wait till the end uh, to respond to if it's uh, about the content of the presentation. But if it's a more technical question, we'll answer as we go through. Um, so the Q&A box is located at the bottom of your screen. And uh, you can submit any questions and we'll just <clears throat> go through our presentation and the uh, web maps demonstration, and then we'll turn to the Q&A portion. <clears throat> and then the other thing I want to mention was that a reminder for those of you on the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee, we do have a VPAC meeting coming up right after this at 10 a.m. Um, so uh, if you would like to attend as uh, just an interested party, you can observe the meeting as well. So that will be coming up at 10 after the end of this workshop. So I'm going to start with my first slide. Uh, so for today's presentation, uh, first I'm gonna provide some background on the facility inventory that we, the purpose of the inventory, some background on where it comes from and uh, what, what we use it for and uh, kind of some more details on what we include in the inventory. Um, and then we'll go through uh, what we are requesting here, which is final edits on the inventory. Um, so we'll go through the timeline of what we've done so far and then focus more on our final review process. Um, I'll turn it over to Nick at that point to go over the interactive web maps and demonstrate them. Um, and then at the end, we'll have a Q&A for you to ask any questions related to the inventory itself or uh, more detailed questions about the web maps. We have a lot of time, so this is a good opportunity to kind of go through that with you as you start your final review process or continue on if you've had a chance to begin it already. <clears throat> so starting with the kind of high level background of why we're collecting this data. So everything we do at PSRC has its basis in Vision 2050, our regional growth strategy. Uh, so our regional transportation plan is based on the Vision 2050 regional growth strategy. Uh, so the regional transportation plan contains a lot of data that we've collected from working with jurisdictions. Um, and different uh, information about analysis of that data on existing conditions and based on that analysis of where there are gaps and in the network, particularly for bicycle pedestrian facilities, um, for example, um, what our priorities are for the network and then our strategies for helping fill them at the local level. So the regional transportation plan then kind of feeds down to the next level, which is our local comprehensive plan updates, which I know uh, everybody in the region is very hard at work on at the moment. Um, so it's an iterative process, starting with the Vision 2050, moving to regional transportation plan, um, and then going to local comprehensive plans, which uh, use can uh, use some basis in the regional transportation plan. Um, and then the data that you all collect as part of your local comprehensive plan updates and other processes at the local level that feeds back up into what we do at PSRC. So we use that data at the regional level and then use that as the basis of our next plan, uh, which we are currently in development of. So we kicked that off uh, earlier this year. We have our current regional transportation plan was adopted in 2022. And we are already in the midst of getting ready for our next uh, regional transportation plan, which will, is set to be adopted in 2026. Um, so the data that we're asking uh, from you as part of this process for updating this inventory will feed into that next uh, regional transportation plan. So, <clears throat> so getting a little bit more uh, granular from that. Um, so one of the uh, strategies in the regional transportation plan is to maintain state of the practice data and analysis. Um, so that is the objective we have here. Uh, we have a regional pedestrian and bicycle facility inventory, which we originally created um, in this current form um, in 2020. Uh, so we completed it last time in 2020, um, and that provides baseline data for informing the regional planning work we do at PSRC. Um, and our goal here is to examine that inventory and make sure it's both accurate that everything in there is accurate and has been reviewed by local jurisdictions um, and that it's current. So we're looking for any updates that inventory since 2020 
And then our kind of dual purpose here is to look for those updates on to the actual network itself, but then also to give everyone a chance to review the data in the inventory and let us know of any corrections that may be needed since the last inventory. And just kind of as further background on where this inventory came from, both in the 2020 version and this version, all of the data is based to the highest extent possible on the data that you all collect at the local level. So in 2020, in, in addition to this process, we collected data from local jurisdictions, and then we created the inventory from that. So this is once again, working with our uh, local partners to make sure you have a chance to review the data since that last update and tell us about anything that needs to be updated or uh, in some cases fixed. <clears throat> so um, for what's in our inventory update work program, um, so as part of this, our first step was gathering that feedback from local partners on the current inventory. Uh, we kicked that off uh, last year. Um, so we had a lot of extensive follow-up. We heard from almost everybody in the region. Um, I think all but a very a handful of jurisdictions we uh, were able to get feedback from. Um, we used that information to update the inventory um, earlier this year. So over the past few months, uh, we made our initial update to the inventory based on the feedback received. So uh, those first two steps are now complete, and now we are working on our uh, final jurisdictional review and finalizing the inventory, which we are hoping to complete by the end of this quarter of 2024. Um, so we, last week, we sent out a request for, um, final, for the final review to jurisdictions. Um, so hopefully you got that email, um, and we updated our interactive web maps. So now you have what was updated in the initial feed, uh, initial review is now ready for you to take a look at and let us know um, if it accurately captured the feedback provided last time. Um, and in, as part of this, uh, yeah, so um, in addition to providing feedback on how we incorporated the edits uh, from last time, uh, we are also looking for further feedback on if we the way we categorize facilities as new, modified, or corrected um, was accurate. So we sent that out last week. Our deadline is May 24th. Um, so please uh, complete your final review and let us know if there's anything that needs to be fixed or you can either email us or provide those edits on the interactive web maps. So I think uh, right here, I'll, I'll take a pause just to remind everyone of what is included in the inventory. Um, so what we have in the inventory is uh, pedestrian and bicycle facilities on arterial and above roadways. Um, and shared use paths that connect regional destinations. So there's a lot more information in the guidance documents uh, that we that we sent out as part of the final request. Um, but for this review, we would like everyone to take a look at um, the facilities on the arterials that are included in the inventory um, and let us know. So just that want to provide that reminder that we're not looking for anything below the arterial level since that would not meet the regional threshold. Um, and then I'll move to this slide. So. For, as I mentioned, we're looking for feedback on how we categorize the updates received. Um, so we received, uh, I think, was it, Nick, 5,000 updates? And it's just under 4,000. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Exaggerating a little bit. So uh, we received just under 4,000 edits. Um, and most of the edits that we received were from the interactive web maps that we provided as part of the initial review process. Um, and based on um, the edits that were provided, um, as well as, um, in some cases, the comments that were provided with the edits. We have gone through and made the edits, and then we also categorize every edit as new, modified, or correction. So we wanted to take the opportunity at this workshop to provide more insight on what that means. This information is also shown in the guidance document that we sent out the final request. Um, so for new facilities, in this case, where you're talking about any facilities that have completed construction um, since the last time that we received data from you all in 2020. <clears throat> so that could be a segment that had no facilities and now has complete facilities or could have some facilities, but not fully covering the segment. In those cases, we call it no, new, uh, new facilities, partial facilities uh, that went to complete facilities. So if there was a stretch of road with um, uh, some sidewalks, but not covering the full length of the segment, we would call that um, a new facility as well. Um, so those have all been categorized as new facilities. Um, and then uh, I also want to take a moment to, I think Nick will go into this a bit more too. What We talk about segments, that means 
that the length of a road between uh, two intersections on our arterial would be considered a segment. So for each of those segments, we're categorizing them as new if they had no facilities and they went to complete or partial, or they had partial facilities and now they're going to complete facilities. Um, for modified facilities, that would be facilities where the only change uh, since the last update were just to the facility type. So the facility did change, but it went from one type of facility to another. So for example, if uh, a stretch of road has striped bike lanes and it went to buffered bike lanes or protected bike lanes, we categorize that as modified rather than new. So we're acknowledging the change, but the change was to the type of facilities, but it's not to a place where there was there were no or partial and now they have um, facilities there. Um, corrections is simply where there were actually no changes to the infrastructure on the ground. Um, so the only edits uh, that were provided were to correct what was in the inventory from 2020. So there might have been some data that upon further review, the jurisdiction has updated on their end and they are letting us know that we should edit our original inventory. Um, or in some cases, there might've been a misinterpretation on our part. So in either case, the corrections would just be to let us know where there was something that we need to uh, make more accurate in our current data. Um, and then to touch on shared use paths, um, for shared use paths, the edits would be either a new facility where you, there was an added shared use path, um, I don't think there could be a modified shared use path, but uh, <laughs> or a correction to the shared use path. Um, so yeah, am I missing anything here, Nick? Or oh, I think that, okay. that covers it. Um... Okay. So, um, so before I turn it over to Nick, um, so as I mentioned, we provided, we have a few resources to help you with your final review process. We have a guidance document, which has very extensive detailed information. I think it's about five pages long where you can read through it. Um, and um, everything that we have in this presentation is available in the guidance document as well, as well as a lot more detail. Um, and when we post this presentation, you'll be able to <clears throat> click on this link as well to get to the guidance document. Um, we have two web maps. One is only sidewalks and one includes both bicycle facilities and shared use paths that are in separate rights of way. Um, and then we'll be posting this workshop presentation, um, the slides, as well as this recording once we've completed it. Um, and then I think we can turn it over. Oh, actually, I'll talk about next steps before turning it over to Nick. Um, so for next steps, uh, we have our final review process with the deadline of May 24th. Um, so once everyone's had a chance to do their final review, um, we'll take a look at all your edits, um, and then we will uh, be finalizing the inventory based on any additional feedback received in that review process, whether um, a change to, with letting us know that we categorize the facility incorrectly, or um, if you find something from our initial review that needs to be updated. Um, and then the next step after that is um, after we've completely finalized inventory, we can get started with using all the updated data for the next regional transportation plan. Um, and one of the really exciting things we're looking forward to being able to do as part of that next transportation plan is showing how things have changed since 2020 um, and showing kind of trends and filling gaps and um, updating facilities on the ground. Um, so that's why it's really important for us to make sure we have accurately categorized everything as new, modified or corrected. So I will turn it over to Nick at this point. Great. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I'm recognizing a lot of names in the attendee list right now. So I, I'm sure a lot of you were involved in this previous editing process or pro in providing the initial edits. So you're likely familiar with the um, interactive maps that we shared for that process. But um, for this final review, we've made a few tweaks to the interactive map format. And so there's um, some, some strangeness to it that I just sort of want to take a minute to explain. Um, so I'm, I'll start first with the pedestrian map here and just sort of like walk you through this interface. So looking at it first, we're kind of zoomed way out. Things are a little fuzzy with all the arrows, um, but I think today I'm going to I'm going to zoom in a bit and pick on Redmond. Sorry about that. Um, and so we'll we'll look here and get a better idea of, uh, you can see the segments at a better scale here. So to walk you through first, over here we have the map legend. So um, it, you can see that green right here is complete facilities, um, yellow is partial facilities, and this grayed out uh, line is no facilities. 
You might have noticed, though, as I was zooming in, there's kind of like a fuzziness and it looks like some layers are overlapped. And that's because when you first uh, click on these links and open them up, there's multiple layers that are active. So when, when first opening it up, the, the first thing I would recommend that you do is just kind of click this I button right here that will turn off the visibility for um, these layers. And then you can go layer by layer to look at them. So right now it is just showing this primary pedestrian facilities layer um, with a note next to it um, saying, please edit this layer. So this is the layer you'll be clicking on to actually provide the edits. And I'll explain that in just a moment. Um, but before getting into that, uh, we'll, we'll walk down through all these. So first, this pedestrian facilities layer, this is a merged version of right and left-hand side completeness. So the green that you're seeing here is segments of the arterial network that have that are complete for pedestrian facilities on both sides of the road. The no facilities, this grayed outline, are uh, segments of the arterial network that are incomplete or, or have no facilities on both sides of the road. And uh, the partial network is everything in between. Maybe the right side is complete and the left side has no facilities or uh, whatever partial version that might be. So I'll turn this layer off and we'll move right down to the right hand or right side type of update. So this is showing uh, facilities on the right hand side of the road. And again, I, I'll just note um, these arrows indicate the direction of each of the arterial segments. So looking right here, the right hand side would be this side of the ro roadway because the, um, the arrow is pointing towards uh, the southwest here. So up here, you can see that the legend updated with the new layer. So now it is showing uh, the type of update for the right side of the road. So green is now new facilities that have been added as part of this process. Yellow is corrected facilities. And the gray is where nothing has been changed um, as part of this process. So looking around at kind of downtown Redmond here, you can see that on the right hand side, there were a few edits made to these arterial segments right here. And um, we can tell from the color that those were corrected. So I'll close this, and then you can look at the right-hand side as well. And this is the same sort of information, or I'm sorry, left-hand side. Uh, and this is the same sort of information, but for the left-hand side of the roadway. Further down, this is where you actually can see the completeness of the um, facilities on these arterial segments. So first looking at the right-hand side, you can see what our data shows here. Um, and uh, again, this shows complete, partial, and no facilities, uh, and that should be pretty self-explanatory. And then moving down to the left-hand side, it's just the reverse for the left-hand side. And then we have these two um, layers down here, if they're helpful, with uh, city boundaries and county boundaries, which um, aren't visible at this scale, but um, yes. So um, I'll open back up the primary layer that you're going to be editing. So. Taking a look at this, um, you get a broad sense of what's complete and what's partial and where no facilities are. Um, but like Sarah said, kind of one of the primary things we're looking for is feedback on the type of update. So what I would suggest is first look at the right and left side type of update. And so here we can see that these two segments right here have been corrected. And let's just say hypothetically that these were miscategorized and these were actually new facilities. Uh, that were installed in the past several years, and the data was updated, or you updated the data to reflect this. So then we, you would want to go in to change this from corrected to new facilities. So then you can zoom in here and get a little closer. Um, but one one quirk of the map is that when you click on this, this is this is actually a separate layer. Um, so you're not going to be able to edit the type of update or the completeness layers. Uh, it'll just show you the information here. So I'll close out of this, and then you're just going to want to hide that layer, open up this primary layer, and click on that segment. And then the uh, attribute table will open up here, and the fields will be visible for you to edit. So walking back down through these, we have our PSRC edge ID. This is like the unique identifier for each of these segments um, to help us track uh, each of them. We have road name. Principal arterial, or this is facility type. Um, so this is a principal arterial. And then we have our completeness here. So the right hand side is no, and the left hand side is complete. Uh, and then you can see that the right side was corrected as part of this, this process. But um, in this hypothetical scenario, uh, we 
this was, um, we were changing this to new facilities. So you would close this out and type in new facility here. Um, and then scroll down. If there was an update to the left-hand side or you needed to change the update the data, you could fill that out here. And then if you have any notes or if you would like to provide additional information as far as edits to completeness on both sides of the road or, or bike type, if we were looking at the bike map, we ask that you um, fill out this requested change column. Um, and one challenge that we had in the, the last process was um, sort of uh, unclear information in this requested change column. So it would, it would be very helpful if you took a moment to provide uh, like a full sentence or something descriptive enough to where we can tell uh, what type of edit you would like to see and on what side of the road um, and whether or not that is a new facility or a correction to inaccurate data that we have in the inventory. So that sort of information would be great to provide here. Um, so in this scenario, let's just say, um, we could say this uh, was a new facility that we added, um, something like that. So that tells, that tells me that you've changed it from corrected to a new facility. Um, and then a final note here is uh, please provide the reviewer name and reviewer jurisdiction. So I'll just say Nick here and PSRC. And this is just one way that we kind of um, do a quick little check to make sure that we're receiving this from a valid source. These, these links are technically available to the public if anyone had it so they could provide information. So um, make sure that you're providing your name and your jurisdiction so that we can follow up with you if needed, um, if we have any questions about the changes that you make. And then I'm not going to hit update here because I don't actually want these changes to be incorporated, but um, please make sure that you are hitting update uh, so that the changes that you make are actually incorporated into the data. Um, so for now, I'll just back out and discard my edits. So I think I hit most of the points, but now I'll jump over to the, oh, one note before we jump over to the bike map that I wanna show is um, there are different base maps available. This one is all right, the default that they start you off with. Um, but if you click this icon up in the top right, uh, there's all these different base maps here. Whatever is your preference, feel free to select that. Uh, I personally like the light gray canvas as an alternative. Um, so I usually choose that when I'm coming in here and looking around at things. So that's just an option for you. Uh, did you have a note, Sarah, before <laughs> moving to the... Yeah, I just wanted to know. So if you were part of our initial update process, um, you'll notice a few things are different. This is not exactly the same as the interactive web maps we sent you previously, even though they look pretty similar. Um, so as Nick mentioned, uh, for this, we're not in the previous update process, it was much more extensive. Um, this is kind of a shorter time window. This is more for everything should be accurate. So we're just asking for any, um, these would be hopefully smaller corrections or uh, talking about how we categorize facilities. Um, so unlike the previous process, you won't be able to edit every field. You won't be able to add facilities in if they're missing, but you can submit that as a change or submit that as a requested edit. Uh, so for this, the only changes you'll be able to make to the map are uh, to those fields for changing the how the facility was categorized and then um, putting in a requested change. So let's say, for example, there was a segment of a shared use path that we did not add that you wanted us to add. You can still ask for us to put that in there um, and put it where generally the location would be, but um, you can't draw in the segment as you could with the previous version of the map. Yeah, yeah thanks for that clarification. Um, and I guess I'll, I'll add, uh, if you do find that there are a significant amount of edits to the the, the completeness field or the facility type or, or the real meat of the data, feel free to follow up with us and we'll figure out some sort of process for, for giving you access to, to edit those layers and provide more edits. Um, but we're hoping that most of the edits were captured as part of the lot as part of the last process. Yeah, we did have almost four thousand. So. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully, we captured almost everything. Um, so I'll just quickly jump over to the bicycle data editor. I've always already gone into here and um, hid the the view only fields for this um, and changed the base map. Um, but one thing you'll notice here is that this map includes shared use path facilities. So um, 
I guess just bouncing between, you can see running along the uh, Sammamish River here, there's um, some sort of shared use path. So uh, shared use paths are included. They, they are um, facilities for both pedestrians and bicyclists, but we just included them in the bicycle um, data editor just for simplicity. So um, for the most part, uh, things are exactly the same, but let's let's close this and look at right hand side type or right side type of update. Um, you see there were some changes up here to to this corner intersection right here, Northeast 85th and uh, I'm not sure what this is, 164th Ave running north south. So there was a modification to the bicycle facility type on this segment right here from this intersection to this intersection and a correction from uh, this segment, from this intersection to this intersection. So let's close here. So let's say maybe this was um, misidentified. Uh, it wasn't a modification um, and this was actually just a correction to the data. So you'd follow the same process. You'd open this up, scroll down, um, look at this. You could say, uh, just change correction from, or for, change it from modified to corrected. Um, and then provide some information here as far as uh, it was misidentified as a modification when this was actually a correction and then provide your name and jurisdiction. And uh, yeah. So I think that that covers generally um, how to use the interactive map. Um, I will say that if you run into quirks with it, uh, I am always available to reach out with questions about it or if you're finding something weird please let me know. Um, I'll try and figure out what's going on. Um, but yeah, unless there's anything else, I guess we can open it up if, if folks have questions right now. Um, you know, I'm not, yeah. So if you have questions, um, so we have the Q&A box. You won't be able to speak, although if there's a clarification needed, we can um, unmute you as well. Um, so I'm not seeing any questions right now, um, but before, well, I guess while you're all um, entering your questions or thinking if you have any, <clears throat> either about the inventory itself or um, as part or, or what uh, Nick just demonstrated with the interactive web maps. Um, I had a few things I want to mention, although I do see we just got a question. Um, so the question is, are we able to see our previous comments? <clears throat> you will not be able to see them, but they should be captured in the interactive web map. And <clears throat> you will be able to see on the web map anywhere where there was an edit. Yeah. And um, I guess to, to add to that, a, the links to the previous web maps um, should be still active. So if you still have those or, you, or reach out to us if you need us to send the link, um, but you should be able to zoom in and see what you provided on that previous map. Um, just to, if you want to double check that you did actually provide that comment uh, the last time or whatever, if it wasn't captured. Thanks, Nick. Um, so here we have a question. Is there a way to isolate the shared use path facilities? So that's all we are looking at. Uh, yeah, great question, Max. Um, I do not believe so, but there is a feature with the interactive map that I haven't been able to completely play with. Um, maybe I'll share my screen real quick. Um, and I, I would be happy to follow up with you afterwards about this, but there's these little little dots next to each of these layers where you can set a filter. Um, I haven't had a chance to really get into this, but you can create clauses here. So I think I think this should work, but you could go to road type is, um, uh, you could put in shared use path and uh, maybe that would work. I'm not entirely sure. I have to, I have to play around with this myself a little bit, but um, I, I'm not entirely sure that that it will work, but um, I could try and follow up with you individually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Yeah, we'll have your questions um, so we can follow up if needed. Um, and I did just put in the chat, uh, one thing I want to mention is um, we haven't, uh, for if you have any questions about how we categorize facilities, you're just talking about a modified facility. Um, we have our PSRC's uh, pedestrian and our regional uh, pedestrian and bicycle facility typology, which we just updated uh, last year. Uh, so I added a link to the chat. It's linked in the guidance document as well. But if you'd like to see much more detailed information about how we made these kind of judgment calls about how to, or I mean, we based our everything based, uh, the different facility types were um, based on uh, the jurisdictional feedback we received, but the typology goes into more detail about the distinction between those different types of facilities. Um, so hopefully that can answer any questions related to the modified facilities. 
Um, so we have another question. Can you clarify assessment of completeness of pedestrian facilities for locations where the map splits between an individual side of a roadway and a median? Should the median be listed as no facility, even though fully across the street, there may be complete facilities? So we've got times and um, the answer is yes, <laughs> uh, that we for we should be um, just marking exactly what's on the ground. Um, so we realize that is kind of a point of confusion that there are some roadways that are shown on the map as it looks like there's two roads splitting off because there's a median in the center. <clears throat> Even though if you're on the ground, it kind of looks like one road. Um, but because there is the possibility that there are sidewalks on both sides of the median as well, we're just trying to at this point really just record uh, what facilities are there. So if there are no facilities on the median, we want to know that. And if there are facilities on the median, we'd like to know that as well. Um, so what, once we get to our next steps, which is actually analyzing the data as part of the regional transportation plan, um, we're going to be working with the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee to make sure when we analyze the data, we are analyzing it accurately and that we're not showing gaps where it really shouldn't be a gap because that was actually um, a place where there was a median with no facilities on one side. Um, so that is kind of something we're going to look at as next steps. But for this initial step, we're just kind of looking at what's on the ground. Um, and then we'll figure out kind of better how to portray it when we um, do our final pro our final um, planning work. Yeah. So rest assured that's on our radar. Um, and but some uh, information on that uh, will be to come. So. Okay. Thanks for that question. Um, and let's see. I'm not seeing any yet. Okay. Um. So. Oh, um, Nick, one thing I was going to see, since we have you all in the room, um, if you wanted to quickly kind of demonstrate the different direction of the road, how to tell the difference between left and right hand side of the road. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll I'll show that again real quick. Um, so just as a reminder, um, yeah, I'll zoom in here again. These arrows indicate the direction of each of these road segments. Um, so when you click here, it will highlight. You can see that this is the full segment from this intersection to this intersection. And then the arrow is pointing towards the east here. So um, for, for the purposes of this data set, um, that is the flow of traffic. So um, to the south would be your right side. And then to the north would be the left side. Um, so yeah, that's just a point of clarification. And since we have the web map sub, um... Or, <laughs> or you can put them. Um, yeah, so I'm not seeing any more questions. We do have, we walked out. We weren't sure how much time we'd need for the Q&A, full disclosure. So uh, we have this uh, set until 10. So if you have any questions, that would be a great time to ask them. Um, so if, if it's a technical question or a broader question, um, yeah, please let us know if there's anything you're uh, not understanding with this update. This is a bit of a different process. Um, if you did the initial update, um, Nick has the uh, bicycle data and shared use map facilities uh, web map up here. Um, you might notice that there's difference in kind of the format of the map and how it looks. Uh, previously, you could kind of toggle between them by moving the map across to show the difference between complete the map showing complete facilities and the map showing um, different type of bicycle facilities. Um, and this one is. Uh, you know, Maybe use the layers similar. for yeah. that. Yeah. Um, the feedback we heard from the the last um, set of maps was that it was it was frustrating that you couldn't visually see uh, the left hand side um, data. Um, you could see all the right hand side information. So um, uh, we did get one more question from from Aaron. Sure. Sure, Nick. Do you want to answer that one? I will click the link. Yeah, so I think the best place would be our open data portal, um, and Sarah will provide the link there. Um, we have two different um, data sets there. I will say that uh, that that was the previous 2020 data. Um, I don't think there's a place right now where you can download this like current in progress updated version. Um, but if you reached out to us, we could definitely share that with you. Um, but yeah, our open data portal, and we have the data separated out for pedestrian and bicycle facilities on uh, the arterial network, and then we have a separate shape file for um, shared use paths. And I think you can download that in Excel or as a shape file or in whatever format works best for you. Mm -hmm. To clarify, this is the current, I mean, the current one that you know, Nick was talking about. That's what we're doing now as a QAQC. After it's QAQC, we would be able to then finalize it and, and post it, I think, is yes. that goal. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. 
And I guess I should add there were some small edits made to that data from 2020. We updated some facility type names um, just to be in line with our updated typology. But for the most part, that's the, that's the exact data that was provided in 2020. So yeah. <clears throat> so you're welcome to download that now um, if you need it sooner. What we're showing here is kind of only exists on this web map because it's the draft version of what we'll we be calling the base year of 2023. Um, okay, so all right. Okay, so we've got a couple more questions. Um, can you still add facility lines that might have been missed previously? Um, you cannot on this version. Uh, we're keeping it pretty simple. You can still request to add that line. Um, but I think one thing to touch on here is um, because we're only looking for facilities and arterials, the only new facilities should kind of fall into the very narrow category of um, one example would be if a shared use path um, was extended or filled a gap within a current shared use path, um, that would be a place where you would be adding a new facility. However, if it's a new facility that's on the roadway, the only reason you would need to draw in anything is if uh, there, there was a change to the roadway itself. So if there was a new road and you it's on the map and you wanted to draw in a, the actual road line, um, but what we're showing on the map is just the roadway network. So um, for if the roadway network line is already on the map, then you would just want to edit it to say you should add a facility here. You don't actually have to draw it in. Yeah. So hopefully that was clear. <laughs> yeah, and if you have like um, arterial segments to add, um, please feel free to reach out to us um, and, and we'll talk about that. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. so you really, you, there, yeah, there should only be a kind of a narrow set of circumstances where you actually need to draw anything on the map. Um, but as part of this update, you actually, um, you can request to add them and then we'll let you know um, if it doesn't meet that threshold. But um, yeah, so hopefully that was clear. Um, so we got another question. Should we account for improvements that are not currently in place, but under construction or planned for construction this year? Uh, that's a great question. Um, and the answer is we are only looking for information on what's on the ground right now. So we have a base year, 2023. Um, so if you have something that's under construction, unless it's, I think maybe if it's going to be complete this week, <laughs> but um, yeah, within the review period, uh, but otherwise we are only looking for what's currently on the ground. Um, and for the next update process, we'll be able to capture anything that's complete um, next year or any year between now and the next uh, regional transportation plan. Okay. And that's similar to Jonathan Fraser's okay. uh, question as well. I think, you know, that again, as Sarah said, this is for inventory purposes only. We're going to be updating this on a pre, uh, regular basis. And so we don't want to be thinking about um, future things. And also to uh, kind of the point, Sarah said 2023, it's not a hard and fast 2023. We're, like Sarah was saying, it's 2024 now. If there's something in place now and, and you've you already added it in, we don't want that as a change, right? We, yeah. It's a generalized uh, inventory of 2023 data, so. Okay, and <clears throat> yeah, so the next question we have, um, yeah, we have another question about the time horizon for the maps. So I think we covered that one um, since they had several facilities under construction that will be opening this year, which is great news. We'll, uh, and we'll, hope, we'll be able to capture everything under construction this year as part of our next update. Yeah. Um, so there's a clarification um, for the question about new facilities was for a connector, a shared use path connecting two shared use paths. And that would be a really good example of where we, you, you would want to add a line to the map of a new shared use path segment. Um, and you can still request us to do that. You just can't do it on the actual map because we made that change just to kind of really simplify this process. We have like a shorter time window. We had we gave everyone a couple months to do the previous one and we got so many edits. This is really just that final review where you can still request any edit you want. Um, you just won't be able to physically or not physically, but virtually make it to the map. Yeah, so uh, Max, it would be great if um, you could just share with us some information about what segment of the North Oak connector is, is not included in the data set right now. Um, and then uh, just so we can have that information and then I'll, I'll go in and I'll draw that into our data set um, and then it will be included with the update. Yeah, and of course, uh, if we have any questions about what the information you provided, um, we will follow up. Um, if you have some more information you want to provide, a map or location information, um, then we can do that by email as well. We are very available for um, any follow-up needed if there's something where you want to kind of put a finer point on it to uh, make a correction to the map or an update. 
Okay. And and by we, uh, I think Nick is our point person yeah. on that, right? So just yeah. to make sure that people know uh, there's three of us here, but Nick uh, Johnson is the primary point of contact. For us. I'll be, uh, yeah, the point person moving forward. So I'm sure we'll be emailing a lot about this, um, but it's exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, and so I put a couple of things in the chat for the typology, if you want to reference and the data portal. Um, both of these, I don't, I think the data portal is uh, linked in the guidance document. Um, not 100% sure, sure, but it's on our PSRC pedestrian bicycle page as well. Um, so I think we have gotten through everything. Unless anything comes in the next couple minutes, we could uh, give you 15 minutes back uh, for your day. Um, and we'll see some of you at the BPAC meeting very shortly. Thank you all for th taking the time to be here. Um, let us know if you have any questions. Yeah, we're uh, always happy to answer questions. And just want to reiterate, we'll be rec we re recorded this, so we'll be posting this along with the slides on the website.